Hey, there we go. We have audio now. All right, so um, I didn't even clean up the Mad Lab for this because I've literally been waiting two years for this device, I mean, and that's not an exaggeration. I uh, actually ordered it at Google I.O. 2013. Um, it's actually the first Kickstarter backer for it and because I've been following closely and, in fact, was... this is based on um, and I've been tracking the project for quite some time before that so without further ado I have not even opened this myself yet um, hang on, I'm trying to make sure there's nothing else damning in this image it's all my gadgets and junk literally this is my mad lab I tear stuff apart build stuff code Ooh, very pretty so let's see download register and download the installer So you guys can see. Assemble it, hook up all the bits and pieces, because this actually dangles off a PC. There's calibration application in the meta folder to optimize the display settings for your eyes. That's probably IPD adjustment. And then play with it. So I'm going to go to getmeta.com slash meta1. i find my mouse cursor. At meta.com slash meta one. Oh, get a meta.com slash meta one. So basically, this is the Epson Moverio BT100, I think is what they ended up using um, platform, which is it's a personal. Not even, that's not even fair. It's basically an Android brick connected to stereoscopic screens that use a prism technology, not unlike the displays used in Google Glass, but do not confuse this with Google Glass. Everyone out there comparing this to Glass and Oculus uh, are clueless. Glass is an accessory HMD, just like your watch. It's really not all that different from um, uh, Google Android Wear platform, except that you get a camera mounted to your head, which can be convenient. Um, it's also not anything like Oculus because it's AR, not VR, and they are completely entire. Anything else you could strap to your head and or put a display on, on your face. Like, yeah, there's displays and there's potentially cameras, but that's about where the similarities stop. Um, this, what this does is it allows you to overlay computer generated graphics into the real world in a meaningful way. Using their 3D cameras and their amazing software, it can understand where things are in the physical world relative to your vision. And that'll help provide the illusion that it's actually in the physical world, which is true augmented reality. That is your augmenting reality. There's a lot of ways to fake AR and, and some actually pretty convincing experiences using simple things like a QR code printed onto a, a table and, and looking at it with your phone screen like that. But um, nothing comes close to what this is doing anywhere else. I feel more rushed if I actually had anybody in here, but maybe I can edit this after the fact rid of all this dead air time. Hmm. I go figure two years later, I can't remember the password for their website. A year and a half, whatever. I don't think of, if I've even got one, I don't think I've signed in since I bought the thing. Email not found. Wow. Well, that's kind of tricky. Ah, uh, yes. Now I remember I got an email the other day. I didn't follow up where they gave me my meta product ID that I was supposed to go register with and I didn't. Ta-da! Yes, Meta, you did tell me to go register, and I didn't. Entirely my fault. Ah, 
I shouldn't be surprised at how few people there are, well, no viewers at the moment, um, considering how few people actually know about Meta. But what does surprise me is how few people know about Meta. This stands to be, th th this opens up a possibility in the real world that stands to have as much impact on the PC as the mouse did, if not more. Really uh, is wild. Okay, oh cool, hollow form. Bit of interaction with 3D objects. So modeling, hollow web browser, hollow tunes, load your favorite music into hollow space and jam using our unique music player. Watch out for hollow DJ. Oh, apps coming soon. That sounds very interesting. All right, so. First thing is the meta installer. This next to my uh, bio and leap motion folders. That's something else that I'm getting really excited about is to see what people are going to do uh, with Mayo in particular, integrating Mayo into this. Because this works great when it can see your hands, but if it can't see your hands, it can't do anything. Mayo could help bridge that gap and make for a more uh, immersive experience altogether. Yeah, I get a six month license for Unity. Not that I necessarily need that right now, considering my licensing situation, but very cool. I'm sure a lot of uh, developers out there are gonna have, they're gonna gain a lot of benefit from that. Since the platform of choice for the system is Unity. So I'm gonna have to make note here uh, for everyone watching After the Fact, sorry, I've got four monitors and I'm not trying to show this entire mess that is my lab. So <laughs> I'm working on one of my monitors right now to grab the installer. If I have a screen share option on here, which I do, tell you what, I'll bring up the installer on one of my other monitors and I'll share that to make this a little more interesting while I get the software going. So you'll have to forgive me because my smallest monitor is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440. So this might not even be readable, I don't know. Get this stuff out of the way. Too much happening. It's a reason I have four monitors. I manage a lot of platforms. Can you stand the excitement? All right. Why in the world? I just got a prompt for the meta installer that I'm already running on another screen as if it's gonna start the installer a second time. Okay, well, don't know what that's about. Holding. Well, here, since that's actually not any more interesting, while that goes, this beautiful red velvety cover Oh, probably a screen camera lens cleaning cloth they just used to make for the uh, <clears throat> make the packaging very attractive. Yeah, my headset's cutting out. I would guess this little brick here still has the uh, the Epson uh, Muverio heart inside of it, but it's hard to say. They may have um, redeveloped this thing completely. My head, my headset's not acting nice today. So on the one side, if we can get some focus going on here. I think I'm gonna have to pull up some manual 
camera control. I'll do this and uh, yeah, autofocus was off. Let's see if this works a little better now. There we go. So they've got a little label on here, it's like computer side. So HDMI will be, can you do it camera? You can do it. So HDMI is gonna be input from the PC. That's what's going to be displayed on the unit. Um, power switch, LED switch. Um, the mini USB is gonna be a connection to the PC I imagine also. And then on the glasses side, we have audio, USB cable glasses, and more USB. So I think it's it's effectively a USB hub. Um, be interesting to see what that's for. Maybe the glasses have a second dongle off it and the audio maybe are from the glasses. Then on the top of the brick, we've got a couple buttons and a little control panel. Um, so now I'm thinking this probably isn't the original Epson brick because it had a big touch pad on the top. And I don't see them getting rid of that on one hand. On the other hand, the original brick did also have the D-pad with the selector on the bottom. And these two buttons were equivalent to uh, back and menu, I think. On here, it looks like brightness. And there's this kind of 3D square looking thing, which probably turns on and off the 3D camera or something to that effect. Uh, this system has both an RGB camera and a uh, IR camera or IR cameras, and the combination uh, lets them do their 3D mapping stuff. And I just realized on this side of the brick, there's also a little switch that's down there on the bottom right, kind of buried inside that. There you go. You can just see inside that little cutout, there's a tiny little switch. Sorry about the camera not focusing. I'm using just a Logic webcam since I didn't really plan this ahead of time. Ew, I got a spiffy holographic sticker. I've always wondered if that's correct to call these holographic because they aren't holograms in the traditional sense that I know, but they do something to spread light uh, much like a prism. Okay, so we got a actual cleaning cloth, so maybe that the red thing was just for pretty prettiness sake. HDMI cable that I won't need because uh, as an Oculus developer, I have an HDMI can cable dangling off of my computer in addition to my other four monitors. Okay, someone apparently was eating chocolate while packing my unit. <laughs> I hope that's chocolate anyway. That's, yeah, it looks about like chocolate with the mess it's making. Nice meta. Well, we know you guys were happy while packing this stuff anyway. Let's see, we got, wow, that's a really, really robust micro USB cable. Like this thing is super thick. Oh, it's a monoprice.com. Spare no expense. Um, and I've already got one floating around here. Let's see if I can find it quick enough to use it rather than having to unpackage another one. Oh, you guys would love to see this mess I have. A little gadget and toy you could imagine. Find ways to make money with what I learn. Okay, I can't find my other one, so this one wins. Since I know I'll need it. Okay, so um, Meta installer has been installed and thinks it needs to restart my computer. Terrific. Let's hope it's wrong because I can't restart while keeping this Hangout going. Should have done the Hangout on another machine. Oh, it's a pretty long cable. So I'm going to hope this works okay with my USB 3 hub. I never would have imagined that being an issue, but I discovered the other day while flashing a Kindle Fire HD um, to put KitKat on it, an HD7, the 2013, the first one, I think, the one with the camera. Turns out fast boot won't work over... Uh, 
Ah, okay. So there's little little headphone uh, ear. Yeah. So it looks like it dangles off either side of the unit. Should I choose to use those, which I won't set up right now, and they can't. Wow, my headset is just reconnecting over and over. Logitech G930. I love this headset, but sometimes... Oh my goodness. These guys weren't kidding. Okay, so here's the actual unit. Huge. Gigantuous. And I can see... That looks like there might actually be a mic array on the front. There's, here, let's see if we can get that glare. There we go. You can see there's little pinholes on either side of the glass. Right there next to that light. And then the two cameras. And then looks like a little LED indicator in the very front. <clears throat> so buried deep inside this thing is theoretically the Epson Moverio. Wow, buried very deep inside. Um, the cables coming off of this are pretty interesting too. And uh, you know, I've got an uh, Oculus DK1 and a DK2, and I've used Crescent Bay uh, at Connect. And I'd have to say this, this isn't a whole lot worse overall than either any of those three. So for, for an AR experience, not so bad. Um, Interesting things going on here. It looks like there's some little releases down here. See these? Kind of tough, but they swing over to the side. And I'm guessing these are IPD adjustments down here. But let's see what happens when I do this. Wow. Okay, so that's the whole optics array. And that is not the Moverio BT100, I don't think. That might be the 200 or a completely custom system. Uh, I'm thinking that's the 200 because that prism is huge. Uh, according to how I remember the, um, the 100. So very interesting. Um, while I have this off, let's take a, a peek here because this is kind of interesting. So when I look inside... Here, let's see what I can see. When I look inside, what I can see, there we go. Yeah, so that's IPD adjustment. But what's interesting is they've got to be working those optics. Yeah, I don't know. They, they're, they're dealing with those optics in a way that um, isn't what I expected because this really can't move. So you can't do a proper IPD adjustment. So it's probably a combination of software and the lenses. So you shift the image in the software to adjust where it will appear on each display. And then you have to uh, adjust this to match. And what's really neat looking at this is, is to see there's a lens or a lens array inside. And then there's actually a lens on the outside piece too. Uh, kind of hard to show you with this camera and this lighting, but as I move this, you'll see that there's actually a piece. There we go. That moves in both the front and the back. So I think what they're doing is they're using the outer lens to try to increase the field of view a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm playing with it on my face here to kind of get it lined up. Yeah, there's a whole lot going on here optically. It makes for kind of a limited field of view, but it's probably limited largely to what the actual display will provide so that they can overlay across most of or all of what is able to receive the computer graphics. Um, and inside the box, okay, here's why it slides off. There's this guy also. So this has no lens elements in it at all. Uh, a huge field of view. So my guess is this uh, 
uh, at the expense of some of the AR experience. I'm going to try to look inside of this real quick. Yeah, so I can see everything, and I, I can see how here the screens are just going to be this thing floating in my view with this unit on it. That might actually be what they called the wide angle, or they reference this as like the wide angle piece um, earlier on. Okay, it's, it's trying to give up entirely. I think it's a wide angle in reference to the real world as opposed to expanding the CG. I don't know. Be interesting to do. This is like looking through binoculars in comparison. It's a very, very closed field of view. Be interesting to see how the, the experience differs. Okay, and then so over here we have two USB plugs and the proprietary cable. Not as thin though, so not the same thing. Um, the USB plugs, curiously, are colored white and black inside. When I look at the brick, the brick doesn't color, so I doubt it makes any difference there. And considering the headphone uh, buds that I saw and the holes down here, I would guess that one of those USB connections is for audio. And you can also pull audio off of the brick directly. I wonder about that. I wonder if it's set up so I can send audio through the HDMI connection and take it out there, or if it has to be separate, or if there's some combination of the two. So we'll find that out. So we're getting somewhere now. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the um, micro or mini USB. I should interface it with a computer. Oh, I just found more buttons. Those look to me like volume buttons on the side here. And I'm going to plug in the two USB and the proprietary plug. So this thing's already getting pretty busy. And then we have HDMI. There. Yeah, there's more chocolate. <laughs> I'm picking up chocolate off of this brick. Come on, Meta. Happy team is a productive team, right? And chocolate makes you happy, so double, double happy there. All right, so now we've got five plugs in this bad boy, and we still have to add power. And so the power adapter's pretty typical looking. Uh, five volt, three amp, wow. That's a hardcore USB power supply right there. You know, the first gen, uh, the Oculus DK1 had a, a dedicated power adapter also that was just five volt, one amp. So I built a little adapter so I could power it off a USB and uh, use a little portable power supplies so that I could demo with my laptop and not have to go to AC plugs anywhere. And three amp is a little beefy. That's going to be a little bit hard to do off a computer, but I bet you this could still be done off of, depending on how much draw it really has, could be done off of a portable brick too. Okay, so we'll plug that bad boy in. So look at this busyness here. It's a whole lot. Okay, so I just heard a bunch of devices being in on Windows. Now, and I didn't see any. Um, any sign of Mac support or Linux support on here. I wonder if this is all Windows right now. Wouldn't bother me in the least. 
I love Linux in theory, and I love Compass Fusion, which is going to be a huge component going forward for me with this uh, platform. But um, there we go. But uh, OS X, guys, I don't understand OS X. Why you all put yourselves through that? It's so restrictive and uncustomizable and a pain in the butt. And yeah, sure, you get a terminal, but so what? I've got a terminal on Windows too. PowerShell, um, I get most of the scripting capabilities that Bash provides. And hello, open source. Everything you're used to in a terminal can be compiled to run on Windows also. So I just haven't seen the draw of going over to that crazy, silly, restrictive platform. And I mean crazy. Like the other day, I went to install um, uh, on a machine the Windows RDP client from Microsoft on OS X which was a free app in the App Store. So, you know, it's got the new Get button. I didn't log into an iTunes account to get past step one, which was pretty ridiculous to me for a free app, but okay, fine. So we'll sign in, let Apple know I'm installing it. I could deal with that. What I couldn't deal with was the fact that they then wanted a credit card. They wanted payment information from me to download a free app. Uh, no, I don't trust Apple that much. And even if I did, that's still ridiculous for a free app. Why do you need payment information? So that kind of stuff about OSX drives me nuts and Finder's a nightmare. And I don't know, I just don't get it. I guess if you've been there forever, so be it. If you have to be there, obviously you have to be, but I don't know why anyone would subject themselves to that. All right, so. Let's see, what do we have going on here? Google Glass getting back to me because my glass unit gave up. Let's see. Okay, yes, Glass. I will. Okay, fine. Glass wants to hear back from me over the phone. found the best app ever in the App Store. Not because the app's any good, really, but because of the reviews. Um, it's a phone water... Little micromolecules that make it waterproof. Uh, clearly, just dumb as hell, except that some people probably fall for it, just like the, uh, the microwaving battery charge uh, idea which actually had a little merit to it for anybody that knows inductive charging. There's some sort of potential to be had there. Uh, but anyway, this uh, app has got the best comments you've ever seen. Um, people ranting very creatively of how it saved their life and did all sorts of funniness. Um, so anyway, sidetracked. We're plugged in. Um, device manager. Let's see what device manager has to say about this. I'll go back to screen share for a second. Hopefully nobody's head explodes with all of the, uh, the devices that show up here. So that's software, I believe. Microarray. So depth sense microarray. Interesting. That's off of the um, for the Meta. Let's see. Display adapters doesn't show up. HID. I'm sure a few of these in there were from the Meta but those aren't ever gonna be very descriptive. Um, there's the depth sense camera. Gosh, I wonder if there was a way, oh, you know what? I bet you I could do something really cool. I'm gonna stop screen sharing. I'm gonna switch my camera. Ha 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 ha. Let's see what the meta sees. Oh, now you guys are gonna get more of my mess. Um, so I guess that's just the RGB camera for the meta. Not horrible quality by any stretch. Although I, I venture to guess that's just the plain old RGB data. Oh, here. I'm embarrassed by my mess. Plus I don't wanna show something that I shouldn't be showing for one of my projects. Okay, so there's the depth camera. Let's go back to the screen share. See what else shows up on there. Um, keyboards, mice, and other pointing devices. Eh, potentially one of those HID devices are there. Let's 
I don't think we'd be able to see much there. Those aren't it. Uh, so there's the depth sense audio. So we got the depth sense audio, depth sense imaging, audio inputs and outputs. So there's so there's the microarray. There's the audio output. Um, So I just switched I just switched over to the microarray uh, for a second here in the hangout to see if we could get anything out of it and it doesn't look like it did anything. Testing one two. Testing one two. You know there I wonder if there's a, like an ultrasonic component to this because the depth sense microarray um, I see in well here let's do this. I see here that it does show up. Auto gain control sensitivity. Let's try something. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Oops. Testing one, two. Testing. Testing. No, there's something else going on. Or this needs to be software controlled, or or I've got a USB issue because it's coming back really stuttery and just these brief little steps like that. All right, so let's see if we can find some meta software on the machine now that recognizes this. Got meta apps and meta guide. Okay, so the meta guide is just. Um, Just a web page. It's loading really, really slowly. And here's the meta apps. Oh, hold on, one more thing. Just to confirm. Yeah, so there's it's my meta. Oh no, that's my receiver. Okay, so here's the meta right now. Because uh, this is where I normally plug in my Oculus. In fact, here, let's just be 100% sure. Yeah, so here's the meta. And let's see what we can find out about it. 30 hertz interlaced up to 60 hertz. That's interesting. So the 30 hertz interlaced. I wonder if that's actually throwing 30 hertz. 30 hertz interlace. No, that'd be like 15 hertz per eye. I'm going to change this knowing that it very well may break <laughs> their pattern right now. Because I'd think they would do, if they're going to use, um, well, I, I would think that'd be 15 frames per second per eye. So I'm going to throw it here and see if that gets us 30 per eye and, and know that I may have to come back and fix it. Uh, 1080p max. Provides all our rotations, extend to the display. Uh, you know, now I wonder if I peek in here, if I can move my mouse over and see my mouse cursor. It's be interesting. I got to take my headset off to do this. So, uh, you guys still hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Wow. There's my desktop inside the unit. So I've got to adjust my IPD. Wow, I can't even see my whole desktop through the system with the uh, the optics on it because the optics aren't wide enough to encompass the whole uh, screen. And this gives me a pretty good idea how small the augmented reality visual aspect of this thing is. I still kind of got to wonder why they didn't build... Or, or even potentially, I don't know, maybe they considered it. I would have considered 
uh, doing the sensors as an attachment to the Oculus. And uh, you could have fed the RGB through. Oh, wow. Jeez, without their optics, it's clear that this is a very, very large screen, really. Like, I'm probably standing, I don't know, maybe two and a half, three feet from my monitor, my 27-inch monitor. So based on that, I'd say it's probably about equivalent to a 20-inch display, except um, stereoscopically, it feels like it's a lot further away than the monitor. In fact... Yeah, actually, it's kind of inconclusive. My brain, I think my, uh, I'm not getting real stereo depth cues from it, kind of like with glass. So it varies. If I look out my window, it feels like it's, the image is easily more like, uh, I don't know, 20 feet away and huge, like a 20 foot diagonal. So there's not any real depth cues stereoscopically. Uh, but in my field of view, it's still a fairly narrow band. Um, yeah, I guess it's the best way I can describe it. It, it probably is about as large as a 20-inch monitor would be three feet away, for whatever that's worth. So this other component looks like it's a... I'll switch back over for a second. So this this one, when I put it on, so I was just looking at it like this. Um, when I put this on, you can see there's a nose pad and a and a pad on the other side that are for 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 the forehead. I ought to make this a lot more comfortable. Yeah. So this is the same visual experience I was just having. Although interestingly, it almost looks like it's canted off at an angle. Kind of weird. Um, Visually, it's the same experience, except it's more comfortable. And actually, I kind of like this more because it's slightly tinted, uh, which on the outside, I think, yeah, the outer piece is tinted right there, which makes that image pop more. It stands out more against the real world than it did a second ago. I'll be interested to see what the, um, the theory is behind this massively complex optical array. Because immediately I don't feel like it was a, a good experience since it's what comes on there by default. I'll stick with it for the moment. My guess is that it, it does blow up the display and make it larger. But I don't know that I find that as a, a plus. Because I can't see both edges of the screen very well. Like, my eyes can't get close enough to the lens to get that full uh, field of view. And it restricts everything so much more. I might argue that the display looks a little nicer quality-wise somehow, but it's it's such a restrict. Um, so what's interesting here is, is this, this tells me that it's an extended monitor this way, um, the apps aren't going to be, they're just going to be on-screen apps that are using the sensor array data. So it's not really any different than the Oculus in that sense. So I'm going to run the calibration now and get that set up correctly. Um, if it launches. If it will launch, hello. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so this is just a Unity app. That's all it is, and by default, it comes up at a 720p res. Um, it's interesting. So I know for fact that the, uh, well, or so they claim the display on this is 960 by 540, I think is what I heard but it's being piped out over a 1080p pipe. So matching pixel for pixel, how it's actually coming out of the computer, I think would have some advantages on one hand. Uh, on the other hand, fewer pixels to render would be good. And since it can't actually display all the pixels, 
then I think the aspect ratio matching that um, 96 by 540 aspect ratio would be good. So I don't know. So the best way to do this, the meta guide didn't load up correctly. The dev tools aren't loading. Um, so anyway, it, it came up by seven with 720p display by default. So I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I wonder if this is going to save the display preference for my Oculus across and how that'll work out. So we'll try display four and see. No, okay, so it wasn't display four. Starting the meta one. I don't want to play here though. Um, and F11 and F12 aren't working. I really hate when Unity apps are developed with inconsistent key bindings. Heave of mine. So I'm gonna start calibration again with the shift key so I can select another red display. I think my machine is lagging really bad. Chrome. That would explain why that one page wouldn't load. And I can't kill Chrome or I kill my Hangout. And it's probably why I have the jittery sound because Chrome is killing CPUs. So let me see if I can figure out what's killing Chrome real quick because otherwise this could be a problem for us in a number of other areas. Let's see. Okay, so my FedEx tab and my Hangouts stuff. I think it is this Hangout. It's presently taxing the browser so hard. Um, the chem block video that I had to abort isn't playing nice either. Tech my money. Tech my money. Your page is killing my experience, man. Um, that helped. Chrome is just screaming at me. And it looks like it's specifically this Hangout. And, oh, well, the fact that I'm watching my own stream live in another tab probably didn't help. Well, that got me back a little bit of CPU. What else is going on? Uh, wonderful Windows bugs. All right, so anyway, let's try eight, five. We'll try three now. No, apparently three is actually my primary monitor. Uh, take three. Hey, we got a viewer. Is there chat going on in here somewhere that I can follow? <laughs> All right, I'm waiting for the calibration app to come up again. Okay, I've got the Q&A open now. Um, or don't I? It says the feature, feature is disabled. So how do I enable Q? Figure out how to turn on Q and A. Okay, Meta came up on my other screen. We'll try screen five now. Okay, that's either my projector or Meta. It is Meta, woohoo. Okay, so that's loading up now.
we're actually going to the event page. Let's see if I can manage this thing a little bit better. Ah, oh, my browser is dying. How ironic. And I can't. Let's see. Oh, I just. I could screen share the actual meta screen here if I could get this thing to play nice enough. But now my screen share option is all um, dimmed out. What's going on with my hangout, man? Jeez. Anyone want to reach out to me on Hangouts? Rainaba at gmail.com and offer some suggestions here. I haven't done a whole lot with live Hangouts before, and the little bit I've done, I didn't have these issues. Figure out why my uh, screen sharing all of a sudden doesn't work. Can't screen. When I pull up the screen sharing, I'm getting a blank list and the share buttons grayed out like I broke some fundamental piece of this thing. And at this point, I'm wondering if I can just, um, if I can kill the browser, restart it, and still successfully get back in and resume the Hangout, or if that's going to kill the live Hangout. Alternately, if Google would provide a close session button somewhere, that'd be nice. So I could close all my windows for a particular session without having to close all my windows or close them one by one and then lose them. So I guess Hangout Buddies to the rescue. I'm gonna close my other session windows individually and I'll have to pull them back out later with Hangout Buddy. See if that helps anything. Um, waterproof Android app. Okay, so. Oh, I just heard something bang. Someone reaching out to me? No. It's just Samsung telling me I haven't moved in two hours, which isn't true. My phone hasn't moved in two hours, Samsung. Get with it. Um, okay, so we'll kill that one off. I'm just going to start killing off some tabs here. Ooh, that web-based Android development experience that I was playing with probably didn't help. Try again. Okay, screen sharing is still garbage. Well, guys, um, I don't know that this is going to work, but I think at this point I don't have much choice but to close this Hangout window and try to get back in myself. Um, if I can't get back into this Hangout to resume it as it is, then I guess I'm just going to have to start a second one. Try closing a couple more windows first, just in case. So ironic. I'm, I'm a huge Chrome fan. Let's see. I know a few of the guys in the DevTools team personally. And I have the worst experiences with Chrome of anybody I know. Oh, jeez. It can block video window gone. Oh, this is just bad news. There's a whole lot going on here. Firefox is locked up too. My, my machine is choking. Cloud core 3.6 gigahertz with 64 gigs of RAM, and it's choking on I don't know what. Doesn't make for a very impressive unboxing video, though, does it? What can we do? Um, let's see. So the CPU looks like it's under control now. 
which is why I'm thinking I might just have to kill the browser and start again. Dead Jim. It's a sad thing. He's dead. All right, I don't see much choice here, so and and I don't think anyone's reached out to me. So I'm gonna have to kill this hangout, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can get right back into my own hangout here and resume it in a second. Uh, otherwise, watch my G Plus stream for the next link, and I will resume. Okay, I'm back. And looks like viewers come and gone. All right, so hopefully this just resumed and I didn't have to start the video all over again. But um, so for anyone who might have joined since, I'm having tech problems. Chrome's kind of uh, unhappy with me, and my machine was choking, and I couldn't get my screen shares working. where um, I believe the screen where my meta stuff is running. Let me double check. Yeah, okay. So what you're seeing right now is the same screen. Uh, just in case this video didn't actually resume, and we're starting from scratch. So this is the meta one. Do a really, really quick one here. Um, it's built around the Epson Movario, Movario platform. I thought it was the BT100 initially, but I, now that I see it, I think we've actually got the BT200. It's this little prism display system. You can see the angled pieces in there. So the displays are off to the side and they get reflected onto the eye um, there. This has got lenses in the front and the back um, and tint on the outside, which makes it the display, the Movario display stand out more. But this piece that came on it by default is a really, really limited field of view. There's uh, kind of some IPD adjustments in here that move those lens arrays across the screen. The screen itself doesn't move. There's a mic array in the top of this thing that shows up as a mic input device in Windows. Um, there's an RGB camera, which I can actually flip over to. Uh, let's 
So there we go. So this is the the unit. Go back to our Logitech here. Um, then there's an IR camera that assists with the 3D. And I think that's an LED indicator on the front. I'm not entirely sure yet. On the bottom, we have headphone jacks. It comes with a pair of earbuds uh, or two earbuds. They're really individual that can plug into either side. Um, and then the padding and the straps. And I haven't even put the top strap on, but there's another strap it came with that goes from here to here. So it works a lot like the Oculus in that sense. Um, and then there's the brick, which connects everything. So there's the input to the computer. There's a uh, mini USB power and HDMI, and then output to the glasses, two USB, and this proprietary plug. So, and it was all boxed up really nicely. So now I'm going to fire up the calibration app, which should fire up on the, uh, the other screen that I'm going to switch back over to now. So again, ideally, you're going to be seeing the same thing that I would be seeing here. This calibration app starts up kind of slow. And all right, so firing that up. There we go. So here's the calibration app. I'm going to put the unit on my head and actually see what is happening. So for perspective, when I'm wearing it, that little starting meta uh, rectangle is probably about, I don't know, 10, 15% larger. If I close one eye and, and look at the same thing on my monitor on my 30 inch uh, Apple cinema display, it's about 30 inch, 30% 30 larger. Although it feels a lot larger if I open both eyes because stereoscopically, it appears to be uh, further back at a different depth. Oh, I gotta get my top strap on here. Starting your meta one. Well, it's taking its time starting my meta one. I wonder if I needed to do something. So, okay, so the brick's got a power button. I just clicked it and it turned from green to blue. Um, now I'm seeing the actual Moverio. I switch it back on. Now I'm seeing this huge Moverio menu. I got to take this lens array off because I can't even see the, uh, the entirety of the screen with these things on. So I can't see their configuration menu. And it looks like it's actually just an Android build. Uh, video signal. Interesting. Choose between NTSC, PAL. That'll probably, I probably shouldn't mess with this stuff, but we got wide, normal, panoramic. Um, wide looks like it would actually stretch. See image brightness, image contrast, saturation, and hue. And then there's a switch to external input on the top. So I'm going to click that. And getting a bunch of screen flickering. And I'm guessing I've screwed up the... Um,
Now I'm not entirely sure if I've just been in dead air or what. These live hangouts aren't, um, aren't working out the way I'd like. I'm trying to figure out how to enable Q&A. And the instructions say, go to the Hangout On Air event page. I'm pretty sure I'm on the event page because I see edit event and share event. Click the Q&A app. Uh, I don't have a Q&A app. That's the whole point. When I click it here in the Hangout, I get this feature is disabled. Well, to anyone that is watching, my apologies that this is so rough. It was a really ad hoc idea to begin with and feeling kind of incomplete and lost at the moment. Okay, here we go. Someone in the forums talking about Q&A not being available. G plus home events, a creating event, then copy and paste the watch page URL on the YouTube URL field when you set up the event. Does the QA app button show on the event? Not sure it does, but I don't know. Schedule the hangout on air. Well, yeah, whatever. So no QA apparently. Um, the whole point here is I wanted to be able to share and interact but this is what I'm watching right now to figure out what I may have done wrong Well, nothing in that video helped explain why I uh, why I'm stuck on the starting meta screen. So let me contact these guys real quick. And I'm gonna Go back, try one more time to start that calibration app. And then if all else fails, I guess I'll just have to reboot. Like this is 1990.
that's the case, then I'm back to the position of having to um, restart my computer. Or, uh, yeah, restart or rejoin the Hangout on Air. All right, here we go. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, if I was meta, what decision might I have made that would create such a situation? One of those things could be not starting the service right away, waiting for a restart, even though a restart shouldn't be necessary. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any sign of a meta service there. Check my actual services. No services and see if anything comes up that looks like meta. Nope. So apparently they've just done something and I have no choice but to restart my entire computer, closing out everything I'm doing before I'm going to be able to experience this. I can't think of anything more disrupting. Okay, well, I will be back as quickly as I can. Got to restart my machine, let all my RAID controllers spin up and <sighs> Windows start and everything else involved in that. Workstations aren't meant to be rebooted on the fly. And hello, workstations are what developers use. <clears throat> or I would think anyway, I don't know, maybe everyone works off of MacBook Pros these days. So I'll be back shortly, guys. <laughs> 